We have visited a lot of shambles throughout Kenya. Many of the farmers are telling us that most of their problems are because the weather is so unpredictable. The climate is changing, so planting season is uncertain. Rains come or don't come. This is causing many problems for farmers. We want to give them the help and knowledge they need to adapt their farming methods, increase their income, and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. During our visit to farms, the Shamba Ship Up team has seen the many difficulties farmers face. We have also found some very good methods for farmers to use to help them adapt to all changes in the weather and land around them. Planting the right kind of trees can help improve the soil, feed your animals, and stop floods from washing away your shamba. We visit Martin in Kisumu to learn more. Martin, you explained to me that you're having a problem with your crops here, especially due to climate change. And I got for you an expert, Mr. Miner here, who is going to advise you and other farmers who are farming in such areas, what they can do and how they can make profit from farming and how to adapt to climate change. Mr. Miner, this is our farmer. What can he do? Climate change is here with us. It's a fact. And there are two things you can do about it. One is that you can help us stop further climate change by doing mitigation efforts like tree planting. Or you can also do adaptation uh, activities to, to find ways of living with the change. As far as adaptation uh, processes are concerned, you can plant crops that are fast maturing uh, so that they can grow within the short length of season and that uh, are high value so that they can get you even better money uh, or better income from, from the market. What are the benefits as farmers can we get later on? Generally, uh, you'll be able to get shade, you'll be able to get uh, weed control or pepper. You'll also be able to get the wood itself after some time when the trees mature, both for firewood, both uh, including construction timber. Mm -hmm. Depending on what trees you grow, the trees will also be able to do what we call nutrient uh, recycling. And what I mean here is that uh, when you do, you are, when you have a farm like this and it rains, the nutrients reach beyond the, the roots of the common crop. Mm -hmm. But if you plant the trees because of the fact that the trees have, have roots that land deeper, they'll be able to pick the nutrients, use them, and then bring it back onto the farm for usage through leaf oil. So that we call nutrient recycling. But beyond that, you are also creating a natural pension scheme for yourself because then the trees you plant today, you'll be able to harvest from uh, in future. Trees not only help improve soil fertility, they can help stop erosion. Climate change might mean more flooding, causing erosion in hilly areas. Lucy and James in Embu find out how trees can help stop this problem. James, Esther, what do you have here? We have avocado trees. Avocado trees? Yeah, these avocado trees, James, are good for soil conservation mm -hmm. and further to, to stabilize your soil. On slopes that are not so steep, you can make bench terraces. But on slopes that are really steep, like James's, you should plant trees to help stop soil erosion. You can plant timber trees, traditional trees, but in this case, I would recommend fruit trees, whereby you get fruits for family consumption and surplus could be for sale. You can even get firewood from the same fruit trees. This case, in this case, the, the fruit trees we are holding here is the variety of arch because it grows upwards, whereby we are going to use lesser spacing and uh, in that case, we further stabilize the soils. So I don't have to cut terraces. I just have to plant the trees. Yes, you don't have to make terraces because you further destabilize your soils. So what you recommend is planting of trees on a slope past 55 degrees. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, good, good. So James, you are happy to plant the avocado trees? Very much happy. I know they are very, very useful. Not only stopping the soil, but you're able to get some fruits and maybe sell some to the market and some to eat. It sounds good. Holes must be dug that are two feet wide and two feet deep. Mix manure with the topsoil. Add 20 grams or two bottle cups of fertilizer, such as DAP. Mix well and return the soil mixture to the hole. 
Plant the tree in the middle. Water well. Farming methods like this can help you make it through hard times caused by uncertain weather. Another important farming method to help with climate change adaptation is efficient water distribution. We visit Alex and Irene, also in Embu, to learn more. This is a shamba of Alex and Irene. With unpredictable rains, adaptation to climate change has never been more important. A key issue is managing water. At the bottom of the shamba is a seasonal stream and a well. Caro, I can see you're already here. Yes, Tony, I am. Looking at this beautiful well. So I see you have a very good well, lots of water. And uh, how do you get your water from uh, the well? Have you used yeah. a pump before? We have used a pump before, an electric pump, which uh, breaks down very often. And uh, it's not economical to run. Mm -hmm. You know, we, uh, we you actually draw water from this well by hand, manually, all the way to the farmhouse and the cows. Now I have a solution for you, which is uh, a pump that uh, you will be guaranteed that it will not break down. You have a one-year guarantee. It is uh, manually operated. And we just draw the water from here up to the livestock place and also the kitchen garden. Mm -hmm. And how deep is your well? Uh, 25 feet. That is good for the pump. So you will be able to now get your water easily from the well to wherever you want it to go in the farm. So that's the pump, Alex. What do you think of it? Well, that's a great pump. How does it work? It is uh, manually operated. We will have one pipe go in and another long pipe go up to the, to the farm. And uh, for us to have that, I think, Tony, we need a water tower. Okay. Yeah, so that we can put up the tank so that uh, once he pumps the water, take it up to the tank and then he can use it even for the domestic purposes. So you need a water tower and a tank. So using the pump is what, pedaling it? It's or? pedaling. You pedal like a bicycle. So now you can teach us how to assemble the pump. Caro shows us how easy it is to set up the money maker pump. A small net cage is at one end of the hose that goes into the well. This will stop debris like insects and leaves blocking it up. There is no need for oil or grease. Alex seems to be getting the hang of it. And I'm seeing the results on the other end. The team is quickly building a tower for the tank. A hose will connect the pump to the tower. Meanwhile, I help put the water tank on the tower and connect the hose. When the water is pumped from the well to the tank, the vegetables can be easily irrigated, grow well, and be a good money-making project. Kara from Kickstart has more advice for Regina's daughter-in-law, Catherine, on how to use the limited water available. So what do you have here? I just uh, decided that as the construction is going on, yeah. I show you how to make a flying garden. What is a flying garden? Yes. It's a garden that will help her and her family get uh, vegetables mm -hmm. from just behind the house. Right. And uh, it is very simple to construct. Wow, I can't wait to see that. The Kickstart team get to work. Measure one area of two feet by two feet and dig a hole one foot deep at each corner. Place a hollow tin at the center of the area. Secure four poles, one in each corner of the square. Insert two meter polythene tube around the four poles. Fill the hollow tin with ballast. Mix manure and topsoil and place between the tin and the polythene. Gradually fill the tube but lift the tin and refill with ballast. Repeat until the tube is full. Water through the hollow tin through the column of ballast. This means water will reach all the way down the tube evenly. Make small holes in drawers around your tube. Plant your choice of vegetable seedlings. Caro, this is amazing. I didn't even know it would look like this. Wow, I've even noticed you've put some water. 
Yes, we have to put in some water. Yeah. Because uh, the soil was very dry. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of this is uh, because you see it's a, a bit hot down here. Yes. So this will help her get the best vegetables with very little water. Mm -hmm. And um, because we've used the polythene bag, it also conserves the water. Mm -hmm. So the vegetables get enough water. We have not used any chemicals on this. We've wow. just used organic manure. Mm -hmm. So it is health for her family. And the other good thing is the irrigation. She is now very near to where we are having the water tower. Right. After using the money maker pump to get the water up the tank, mm -hmm. it will be very easy for her now to irrigate her garden. What vegetables can I plant? You can have like a variety of vegetables. Right. But what we are planting here today, we will do spinach right. and kills. Catherine and Regina plant the seedlings in the holes around the sack. The garden only needs 20 liters of one jerry can of water every two days, thus conserving water. It will hold about 150 plants, enough to feed the family and sell at market, which means it's a money-making project. These are just a few farming methods you can use to help adapt your shamba to climate change. You can also use other materials, for example, sacks that hold water and still allow you to grow plants. Georgia Farm is a hot dry land and this is where we meet Stephen, a man with a story to tell. Stephen lives here with his wife and five children and grandmother who lives close by. Stephen toils hard on the black cotton soils of Georgia, struggling against the harsh environment. Dr. Sila, this is Stephen's amaranth crop. Now, from your general observation, what do you think of it? As you can see, it's a low-yielding variety. So if Stephen wants to get a better variety, you need to higher, get a higher producing variety. Two, there are a lot of weeds, as you can see around. Number three, uh, the spacing and management of the crop is terrible. And then number four, there is a lot of intercropping with other kinds of crops, which create a lot of competition for the crop. In your observation, he's not doing well with his amaranth. No, this will not give him enough money in terms of cash if he intends to sell this and even enough crop for feeding himself. So doctor, what's the potential for Stevie's amaranth here? Is there potential? There is a great potential for amaranth uh, in any area in Kenya. One, because it's a very drought resistant crop, very highly resilient. And two, it's highly, uh, highly maturing. So it's fast maturing. So this gives him an option of uh, being able to get a uh, highly maturing variety and also getting higher yields if he takes care of his farm better. Stephen and his neighbors were about to get some higher amaranth education at the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology from our friend Dr. Sila. So two weeks after germination, the crop is almost this size. Uh, so you have to do the first thinning. That means that uh, you have to uh, reduce the population in the overcrowded areas to ensure that you have two to three plants within every 15 centimeters. And that you select the smallest uh, uh, seedlings so that you allow the others have enough ample space for growth and maximize your yields. So to effect that, uh, you look at the weakest uh, uh, seedlings and those are the ones which uh, you pluck out. But uh, you don't have really to bear uh, a lot of interest on the spacing from one plant to another. But you ensure that at least there is, they are not overpolated. After the fourth week, repeat the same thinning process. This time, thinning so that there is one foot between one plant and the next. So at the age of uh, three months, uh, most of the varieties are ready to harvest. And to check whether the seed is mature, you just have to press. When you see seeds coming out, like I demonstrate here, this means that uh, this plant is already ready for harvesting. For varieties where you see the leaves still very green and uh, nothing is coming out of the, the uh, plant, that means that it still needs a something like a week for it to be ready for harvesting. What amount do you use per, per, per acre? On a well-managed farm, you get uh, about 1,400 to 2,000 uh, kilograms per acre. But in a farm which, where there is overcrowding, you get between 500 to around 900 kilos per acre. So to harvest, you cut 
uh, like I'm demonstrating without shaking it a lot. And then all this you put in a gunny bag, uh, ready for threshing. Uh, after threshing, uh, once you have dried it uh, enough, then uh, you winnow and the end product will be something like this. Another fast growing and drought resistant crop to plant is sorghum, which is ready to harvest in three to four months. We visit Mary in Akuru to learn more. Jen, I've been looking at the maize and I've looking at the butter beans and they all look good to me. I, I don't understand. Where is the problem here? This particular area is prone to weather patterns that are very erratic. Sometimes we've got enough rainfall, like now. Sometimes we don't have enough rainfall. And so if she brings in a crop like sorghum, which is drought resistant, it can improve her land use. And uh, we have very nice seed variety that can withstand drought. So she can improve on, her, on, on what she gets from the farm by getting the sorghum. That is, she gets food for the animals, that is fodder. She gets grains, which can be used for her human food, and also even, even sell. So are you recommending that she approves all these butter beans and all the maize and put in sorghum? Not really. What I'm recommending is butter beans here, what we have here, can be used as a cover crop. So she will have the butter beans and sorghum intercropped. Aha, uh -huh. together. Intercropped, together. So one rind for sorghum, and one rain for butter beans. So she'll have her soil covered, so the land use will be proper. She'll maintain her moisture in her soil, must maintain the nutrients in the soils, and she'll get an extra coin from the sorghum. Wow. Plus the feed for the animals. Remember to utilize your land. The beans offer good ground coverage, helping to retain moisture in the soil. But by intercropping with a certified drought-resistant seed, such as sorghum, you will have two crops and a better profit. Also in Akuru, Virginia and Peter learn from neighboring farmers how sorghum has helped them get through drought. So when there is drought, what does better, the sorghum or the maize? Now, when we don't have enough rain yes. mm -hmm. for the maize, yes. Uh, in our locality here. Yes. Just only about one month without rain. Yes. The whole is maize is destroyed. Is destroyed. What about the sorghum? But for sorghum, it, it remains and it waits for the rain to come. <laughs> Once you cut down the maize, it disappears. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. yes. But for the sorghum, okay. it will remain there. There is a there is nafasi. They it will grow again. Okay. Yes. That, that is the benefit we yeah. know. We have experience in yeah. that one. For human consumption mm -hmm. and for the animals, yeah. uh, we, we find the sorghum. Okay. It's far much yes. better yeah. than, the, maize. than the maize. Yeah. This four-acre shamba tucked away in the Undiri Valley near Kikuyu is run by 26-year-old Jeremiah. He lives here with his grandfather who, with his wife, brought up Jeremiah from a baby. Jeremiah grows a lot of nipia grass. Nipia grass has always been the mainstay of a cow's diet. And to make sure there is always a good and plentiful supply, new planting methods need to be implemented. John Mwangi gives him the benefit of his expertise. Jeremiah, I've seen the way you're planting your nipia. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look good to feed to those cows that you are with. Eh? Yeah. You need to plant it using the new method. Mm -hmm. That is the Tubukiza method. Yeah. That is going to give you high yield and it's very easy to plant. Yeah. Dig a hole two feet wide and two feet deep. Mix the fertilizer manure and topsoil. Our hole requires five to ten cuttings of our napier glass for the shooting. Plant the napier sticks at least two nodes below the surface and at least one node above the ground. The yield from this method is two to three times greater than the conventional method. This napier grass can be used to make silage. This will ensure that you have food for your animals during the long dry seasons, an important way to adapt to changing weather patterns. 
Irene tells me they struggle in times of drought for fodder for the cows. But making silage is a solution. It's a way of keeping fodder, especially napier grass, when you have a lot of it during the dry season. Then you can feed the cow and keep your milk yields high and earn more. John Kangara is showing us how to make it. It's not hard. Take your plastic silage tube, gather one end and tie together tightly with a string. Turn the tube around to open the other end and fold over half the tube to access the inside. Next, mix one part molasses with three parts water and mix well. Add chopped material into the tube. Sprinkle the molasses mixture over the chopped material. Mixed well and then pack down by trending on it. Repeat this process until the tube is full. Push out any excess air and tie the end with a string. If it's airtight and stored correctly, it will last for around two years. Another way to conserve fuel and save money is to use solar lighting. It produces a lot of smoke ah. and uh, it, it makes me not to study for long. It spoils the ice. It has got a lot of smoke. The big problem is light, light. during the night. Yeah, ah. it's studying. We introduced daylight lamps to many of our farmers, all of whom say that it had helped them not only with reading, working at night, but could also be used to recharge their mobile phones, saving them fuel, time and money spent going to phone recharge centers. And they feel healthier as they do not have to breathe in the fumes of kerosene. Another important adaptation technique is conserving fuel to save the trees and to save you money. Cooking over open fire is dirty, polluting, unpleasant, and uses a lot of firewood. I get your eyes. eyes. Mm -hmm. The chest. The chest. Yes. It's not. It's not healthy at yeah. all. So this is the kitchen. Yeah, it's that kitchen. Yeah. Mm, I'm yeah. noticing a lot of smoke. Mm. 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 Easy Life offers three different stove models in different colors. They are made from high quality, long lasting material and can pay for itself in only a few months and lasts for three to five years. Easy Life stoves are clean, easy to use, save you time when you're cooking, and it uses 50% less firewood, saving you money. Water is precious. It is expected to become even more scarce in the future. Because I travel very far to search water, and when it rains, uh, I collect much water, but I, ha I have nowhere to put. The tank is small. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm collecting water for my cow. Is it enough? It is not enough. Shamba Shepherd has shown you ways to capture and use water more efficiently, which is another form of climate change adaptation. Make sure your gutters are all fixed and in good working condition. These are just some of the techniques and methods we at Chamber Shape Up have found which can help you to adapt to the changing weather and climate in your areas. As we have seen, by becoming a more efficient and productive farmer, you'll be better able to get through the unpredictable weather and be well prepared.
you'll be able to adapt to climate change and become a better, richer, and healthier farmer. Shamba Shape Up is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter at Shamba Shape Up.